Crypto just flash crashed, Bitcoin is down and markets are in the red, but is there more pain to come? Hey, welcome to the video. My name is Miles. I make these videos because I've already made multiple eight figures for myself through business and investing. And now I wanna help you to become a little bit smarter, wealthier, and more successful starting from today. So if that sounds good, make sure to subscribe, click the notification bell so that you get these videos as they come out and let's dive in. Okay, so Bitcoin just had a flash crash uh, yesterday. It went down, it was about 53 or 54K. Had a pretty gnarly drop of like 22% all the way down to 42,000. So I wasn't expecting that. I was asleep when, when the big crash happened and I found out because I woke up and a couple of my friends were messaging me like, hey, what are you doing about this dip? So I wanted to make this video because uh, in this video, I'm gonna walk through literally my thought process so that at the end of this video, once I stop recording and go away, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log onto my exchange and I'm either gonna buy crypto or I'm gonna sell crypto because I, I wanna do something about this. So I, I thought it would be valuable to actually run you through how I'm thinking about this, what decisions I'm gonna make. Um, and I'll give you a rundown of basically what I'm gonna do at the end of this as well. So that would be cool. But yeah, basically crypto is not looking great at the moment. So in the last seven days, I mean, we've recovered a lot. So you can see here is a huge wick and now we're just sitting at the bottom of yesterday's candle. Um, it remains to be seen what's going to happen. And, and that's what I wanna talk about in this, in this vid. But if you just look at the, the big caps, actually Ethereum, surprisingly, this really surprised me, has actually bounced back and is up in the last seven days. But if you scroll down with a few exceptions like Lunar as well and Matic, both of which I bought recently, but everything else mostly pretty much down between 10 to 20 to 30%. So not looking good in the market. Um, so what I wanted to run you through is the four step process that again, literally I was just writing this down in my journal. And then I thought it'd be good to share this. So the first thing is uh, basically working out like, is this now a time to buy or a time to sell or a time to do nothing? And uh, the way that I'll talk about that is in terms of the long-term thesis, my fundamental analysis, then step two would be, okay, so if you're buying, selling, uh, how much are you gonna buy or sell? Like, is this the time to dive in? Is this, you know, dirt cheap pricing? Or is it, again, like looking like the, the bull market's over and so you need to get out now? So that's how much to buy or sell. And then step three is gonna be when. Is this something you need to do immediately right now? Or do you wanna wait and see how things play out? Give it some time and see, you know, if you're looking to sell, you're gonna wait for a bounce. Or if you're looking to buy and you're waiting for lower prices, and I'll do some really basic technical analysis to show you how I'm thinking about that. And then step four is just execute. So how do you actually, based on, you know, you, you looked at the markets, you've seen what's happening. How do you actually go ahead and, and execute based on that strategy? So again, these are just four steps that I was thinking about myself this morning. Um, so the very first thing that I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna close this down because this is mostly just noise. It's interesting to show you and it's interesting to look at, but it's mostly noise. So let's close that down. We do not need that. Let's close that as well. And let's talk about the first question. Is this time to buy, sell, or just hold? Um, so the way that I'm thinking about this or the way that I will think about this is basically going straight to fundamental analysis. So that's comparing what's happened now, this crash. Has anything happened that's actually changed the long-term picture? So we're looking at the one day view here. Let's just zoom out and just get the long-term view. So this is the long-term view, at least in Bitcoin. Crypto market, uh, total crypto market cap looks pretty similar. But if you zoom out and you're not worried about minor crashes, this is what it looks like. It's basically a long-term secular bull market that just goes up. It has a lot of volatility in the short term, but in the long term, it just goes up. So, and I, and I believe in that, and I believe it's gonna continue going up, but has something fundamentally changed in today's market, in the market structure between the last two days and what happened now, which is basically a huge crash, has something changed? Is this long-term bull market over? Um, or is this just another liquidation event? So let's go back to the one day. Is this just another one of these crashes which have happened back here, which have happened here in 2020, here in 2018, and so on and so forth. You, you, you look back and you just see more and more of them. So that's the very first question that I wanna answer before doing anything else. Um, I had a look and, and to me, some things that would break the long-term bull market trend for me or my long-term thesis would be um, maybe something like a war, like literally if something in the economy has just changed massively overnight, then that would make me rethink my positions in crypto. Another thing would be something like a hack. Like if somebody actually, you know, was reported and confirmed that there are ways to actually print Bitcoin instead of being fixed supply, well, you know, then Bitcoin's pretty fucked and the price is going to zero and I need to get out if I still can as fast as I can. But in this case, nothing happened. So 
again, trying to turn off all the daily price fluctuations and just seeing like, has any of these big events, um, have these, has it happened overnight? Because the markets will tell you that if something real happens and you see this huge crash, um, it could be because there's really something that's changed in the background. However, in this case, basically this was a sudden liquidation event. So what that means is when you use, when you add leverage into markets like this, <clears throat> not everybody, but a lot of market participants are making positions and making bets on generally in the short term, using leverage to, to fuel their potential returns, but they also end up taking massive risk because <clears throat> if you go out of your money, which means basically you say that the price is gonna go up and you bet on that and you use leverage to bet on that, and then the price starts going down, what happens is the person or the institution rather you borrowed money from, if the price falls low enough, you're either gonna get a margin call, which is where they go, hey, your, uh, your, your collateral that you've given us is not worth enough anymore because the price is going down, you need to add more collateral in, or they just liquidate you, which means they just sell what you had so that they can uh, basically hold enough collateral to, sorry, hold enough collateral for your position size. So what happens in these events is when enough people bet the wrong way. So in this case, this was a lot of people betting that the price was gonna go up. So if we zoom in, this was people here <clears throat> around this mark of like the 55K betting that the price was gonna go to whatever, 65K, something like that. And then when the price started to drop, enough of those people started to get margin called and, and then liquidated. Um, which basically meant that they had to force sell at this at these prices as they were going down. They actually had to sell into that, which is really not where you want to be. So you can imagine when if you have thousands or or millions of people who are all getting liquidated at the same time, they're all trying to sell at the same time. That's what causes these huge drops. And if you go to like a shorter time frame, uh, you basically see that it, it happens very quickly. This each of these is just one hour. So all of this movement happened in one hour. Um, anyway, this was a liquidation event. But overall, in the long term, zooming out to that, that yearly view or the monthly view, the bull run's still in progress. So knowing that the long-term thesis is still in play, I basically still believe that that long-term structure is going up. Um, the next question is going to be, well, how much do I need to move my position, if at all? So this is a very personal thing, like, like everything that I'm saying, but specifically in my case, I actually have a basically a percentage allocation of my portfolio that I want to be in crypto. So what that does for me personally is that it allows me to take a lot of the emotionalness out of these out of these movements. Basically, just go, hey, if I've got you know X percentage of my portfolio in crypto, when the price of crypto goes up a lot relative to the rest of my portfolio, what means what it means is that percentage actually goes up as well. And so that's incentivizing me to keep that if I want to keep that percentage pretty stable. Not exactly, you know, I'm not rebalancing it every day, but if crypto doubles then that percentage allocation is probably gonna double as well. And so what I'm gonna do in that case is actually sell my crypto to bring it down so that it's around about the same percentage. Vice versa, if the prices are dropping, <clears throat> if the prices of crypto are dropping, then the allocation is also going down. So in that case, I actually want to buy to bring the allocation back up. And, and so that's what I need to look at right now. And actually in, in my particular case right now, I have a lot more cash than I want to have. And I have now because of this drop specifically, I have less crypto than I want to have. So that's my personal strategy for how I'd be allocating in this case. Basically, if I think that this is a good time to buy in the short or the medium term, which I'll be working out in a second in the next part of this video. But if I do think that that's a good time to buy, um, then what I'm going to be doing is moving my cash, my excess of cash, some of that into crypto. So that's that one. And then the, the next part is going to be, is this a good time to buy? So I'm going to use technical analysis here. Now I'm not a trader. I'm not an expert in technical analysis. And I like to keep things simple. I want to keep things as basic and simple as possible so that I can make decisions easily, make decision and just walk away and, and you know come back later if something changes again. So in this case, without getting too complicated, what historical data can we use? So the way that I like to think about this is history doesn't repeat, but it does rhyme. And so what that means is that patterns will reoccur. And when we have market data like this, it is very useful to look back and see what has happened in the past. And then you can apply, has something changed today? And if it hasn't changed, more or less, you look at what has happened in the past and you can use those as guidelines or boundaries for what's reasonable uh, or what's reasonably possible to occur again today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and look at similar crashes that have occurred in the last couple of years. And I wanna know this event that just occurred yesterday, what is it like? Is it more like, the crash that occurred in May, or is it more like the crash that occurred in March of 2020, or is it like this crash that occurred all the way back in 2018? And I did a bit of looking at these before, and basically I'm 
identifying these as the zone of max pain because that's the best time to buy. You, you want to buy when it's the most scary, fearful, and painful time to buy. That is when historically you will get the cheapest prices. So the correction that we're going through now is it more like the the crash in May where we sort of had this like extended max pain zone, but the market not really realizing that we were going down into this max pain until finally we got there and everything else was, you know, basically everything else was washed out or everyone else was washed out rather. And then finally when we got there, then we could bounce up and start the next phase. But that happened over about two and a half months. Or is it more like the COVID style crash, which was a huge liquidation event as well, but it was really quick. You see this zone of max pain here. Um, it lasted like a week from 11 to the 10th to the 20th, so like 10 days where you had that small zone of basically getting in at where everybody else was the most scared and fearful and you had the best prices, <clears throat> pardon me, available to you. Or was it like all the way back here, this zone of max pain, which was the bottom of the bear market, or the last bear market, which took a lot longer. So this went from November, mid-November to start of April. So that's what, like six months. Um, and what you notice here as well is the liquidation wasn't the bottom. So in the other two examples, the first liquidation was pretty much the, the, the zone of max pain already, but here it wasn't. And so it actually took another, about another month to reach that zone of max pain from that cascading liquidation event that happened at the start. And then it took six months to basically drag to drag uh, the market out of it. So one way of comparing these zones would be to look at the RSI. So that's going to be the relative strength index. It's basically showing you if the number is really high, it means that price action is just being pretty pretty damn bullish and probably too exuberant and it needs to cool back down. And if the RSI goes very low, um, then it's then you're entering into a time where price is probably being suppressed and so it actually needs to bounce back up. And it's not, you know, it's not a very exact metric, but like you can get an idea of basically where is the RSI now versus where was it during these two events or three events rather. And so right now on the daily, we're at like 32. So that is, um, that's oversold. But if we look at the max pain, <clears throat> max pain liquidation in May, where did we get to? We got to like 20 something. It's a bit hard on this screen. 24, 23. So we were worse off then than we are now. And so what that indicates is that potentially if it's like the last event, again, history doesn't repeat, but it does rhyme. If the same thing is gonna happen again or a similar thing, then what you know is that actually there is scope based on the same market dynamics that the RSI could go lower, which basically means that the price could keep going down for a little bit longer. But that's the May, 2021 uh, correction. If we look back at COVID, where did the RSI go down to? It went down a lot lower, down to 15. So that's pretty low. And all the way back in 2018, I laugh when I see this because this was a painful time for me <laughs> because I had Bitcoin back here. And in 2018, it went all the way back down to 10 basically, or even a bit lower. So that's super, super low. So relatively speaking, to compared to those three events, just purely looking at the, the relative strength, we're not, we're, we're pretty close to 2021. I don't even know how I did that. How did I do that? <clears throat> but not so much near to, not so close to 2020 and definitely not close to 2018. The other sort of index that I like to look at, I like to look at these relative, just like averages and also fear and greed. So market sentiment, because I think zone of max pain is a really good way of describing it. If you just look at what everybody else is doing, understanding that most people are kind of dumb and emotional and fear driven, emotional driven rather, and then you can just not allow yourself to be so emotional driven. All you need to do is just kind of do the opposite of what the herd is doing and it normally works out pretty well. So looking at the fear and greed index, which is another way of looking at this, it's similar to RSI, except that RSI just uses its actual price metrics. Whereas fear and greed, I don't even know how they calculate this. So what's it saying here? If extreme fear can be assigned to investors to too worried, so that's a buying opportunity. Again, you're, you're thinking about things in inverses. And when there's too much greed, then because people are getting too emotional, they're getting too exuberant, then you do for a correction. Where's the from volatility, market momentum, social media, dominance, trends. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of things leading into this, but <clears throat> let's take a look at these events. And so we are here and it was 18. So that is, that's pretty low. That's, that's extreme fear. Um, but if you look back at May of 2021, I'll go down a bit. <clears throat> it dropped all the way down to 10. It kept bouncing off 10 again. So that'd be these periods where we just kept bouncing at this like 30K level. So we were more fearful back then. And if we look at 2020, we were even more fearful 
it looks like that's around about eight. So in both, again, in both of those examples, and in 2018, 2018, about 12. So in all cases, we've been lower than we are now. And that's the extent of the technical analysis that I'm gonna do. I just wanted to look at these uh, sort of cont contrarian indicators to get an idea. And now we've got these three different scenarios. Um, one being this like really quick, this is purely liquidation, just intense, like no one knew what was going on. And then everyone was just liquidating stuff or getting liquidated rather. And then it bounced back really quickly. So you had like 10 days to get in this best, uh, the best time period. And then if we're looking, what's that 49 days? So like less than two months before we had basically come back up. Uh, if we look at the bear market of 2018, that was 134 days. So that is five months ish. And if we look at 2021, May, we had, in, again, in this max period, 70 days. And to get basically up to here, it would have been around about three months to go from the start of the drop off to more or less getting back up to where we were. So that's a big range. And basically what I'm trying to work out now is, is this price the lowest it's gonna go? Do I think it's gonna go much lower and take much longer? Or is it like, <laughs> like a potential bear market where we're really going all the way down and we're gonna hang out there for a really long time. And this is probably gonna extend out to here uh, until we can eventually come back. Obviously, these three different scenarios, they have different, uh, you, your action is gonna be different in each scenario. So I kinda wanna know, and I can't know because nobody knows. And if I did know, I would be a billionaire right now, uh, not just a millionaire, but I don't know. So all I can do is weigh things on the balance of probabilities. So I think we could fall further and now i'm just spitballing right so this is again where you need to go make your own decision don't just like blindly follow what i'm doing because i'm i'm going to put this out here and the chances that i get this exactly correct are really low but i as as an investor as someone who is responsible for, for my own financial wealth and my own financial well-being rather i have to make these decisions i can do nothing so that is always an option i could just not buy anything right now uh, like i told you in in the previous section the way that i allocate and rebalance and reallocate is based on basically the price action. So if prices go back up, then effectively this is all a, a wash for me. But as it is right now, I do have too much cash or too much more cash than I wanna have. And I don't have as much crypto as I wanna have. So ideally I wanna buy. So the question is, am I buying today? And just, am I just gonna go and buy at 49K? Am I going to, do I think that things will play out more like May? In which case we could have another couple of months and I could get back down to that week and buy at 40K. Or again, do I think it's the, the really bearish case where we go down to, um, I checked the numbers before and I think the, the drop. So what I'm comparing to, just to be clear again, is this, it's not exactly the same in this case. It's a bit, it looks a bit different, but like looking for the sort of main liquidations, which happen like quickly, I'm calling it would be here, but really this whole zone here. And so what I wanna see is, from here to the actual like bottom, the max pain of the max pain, uh, we had a drop of about 20, more or less. Again, it could be, you could go from up there. So let's say it's like 25%. So that's from these like cascading liquidations down to the actual bottom. Whereas in the other two cases, the, the liquidation event was the bottom. There was pretty much no change here. We went from this price, uh, 29, I think the very bottom, I guess you go down to that week, 28. So like a 5% drop, but essentially negligible. There wasn't much difference. If you could have bought in this first liquidation, you may as well have bought. You could have bought like a little bit lower, but your your odds of being right here were probably better than of, of waiting to here to do it, if that makes sense. Uh, so in this case, if I was looking at this really bearish case and I took it from, what did I say? From the bottom of the week and then dropped it down another 20, 5%, so that's how I calculated this box. And incidentally, that that bearish sort of outcome does take us round about down to the 30K level again. Um, ideally, I don't want that to happen. That's uh, That would kind of suck. I also don't think that that is a very likely outcome. Again, it's like six month zone going all the way out down to 30K. Could it happen? Yes, it could happen. <clears throat> Am I gonna bet on that happening? I'm not gonna bet on that happening. So what I'm gonna do, although potentially in the future, I'll have more cash flow again. So if this does play out, I will potentially have time to actually buy back in at these lower prices later on. 
However, I do feel like what we're what we've just looked at and what has just happened over the last 24 hours is more like a combination or more likely to be. This is all just probabilities. And again, don't take this for gospel. I'm literally just thinking out loud as I make this video. Um, but I think it's more likely to be some combination of this rapid liquidation liquidation event where we would just bounce back up and we just came back up to where we were. And this one, which was a bit more drawn out, significantly more drawn out. And you basically had more and more opportunities to buy back in in this zone of max pain. So I essentially, uh, getting onto this last, the last part of the process, which I'm, I'm just checking my notes here. It's okay, so what do I think is gonna happen? And then how do I wanna bet based on that? Or how do I wanna buy? So I'm not gonna sell. I think that, that much is clear. <clears throat> but how do I wanna actually buy into this? Uh, and to me, it's not clear what it's going to be. We could easily, I think it could easily drop back down to the bottom of this week, which would be around about that 42 level, or it could not. <laughs> it could just, today could be the lowest it goes where it's been sitting around 48, 49 today. So looking at this, I think I wanna hedge my bets and allow for this uncertainty. So when I look at actually making buy orders, me personally, I'm trying to balance a couple of things. One thing is I'm trying to balance uh, getting a good price. I'm not trying to get the best price. So while it would be really lovely to be able to just buy at the wick or at this, you know, the very bottom of the zone of maximum pain every time, that is not a realistic outcome or it's not to be expected that I should be able to do that. So if I can get somewhere within this zone of what I think is a re reasonably good buy, again, you could always just go and look at the long term and just zoom out and see how it all looks. Uh, and in which case it doesn't matter that much where you're buying, but I'm a little bit more uh, selective, I guess. So I wanna balance getting a good price, which is like not, not buying up here, uh, not buying when it's again, overbought with the RSI or with the fear and, greed in, fear and greed index, not buying when everybody's really greedy. But I'm also trying to balance stress. I basically want to just be able to, after this video, I wanna be able to go away, set the strategy in motion and then just walk away. And, and so that people can tell me that there's a dip and I'm not checking this all, the, all day, all the time because I'm, I've got other things to do, I have a life to live. And so I wanna find that happy balance. Um, so basically, what is the way that I do that? The way that I'm gonna go away and do this now is set a series of limit orders. So this is not DCAing over time where you'll be buying every Friday, but actually I'm DCAing over price, which means I think, and I haven't actually set this in stone yet, but as I'm thinking about this right now, what do I think is reasonable? I'm gonna buy some now at this price, just so that I can say and feel good that if it goes straight back up again, like in the COVID style uh, event of March, 2020, which is this line here that I've drawn, where it basically just, just goes back up. Um, I wanna buy some around this price so that I can say, hey, I bought the dip, I feel good, but I'm not gonna buy all of my allocation at this current market price. So with the rest of what I'm gonna do is basically have a, a laddering DCA in price. So what that means is I'm gonna set limit orders such that if the price goes from where it is now, 49K down to 47K, I'm gonna have a limit order set at 47, probably not on the dot. I normally set them like, I don't know, it might be 47, 500, something like that, just so it doesn't have to go all the way down to the zero, zero number. Because again, these markets are human driven. They're very psychological. Uh, round numbers are all like the big sort of barriers. So I'd rather just buy it a little bit above than have it not filled. So I'll set a buy order at 47K. I've got the one at around about 49K, so that's where we are right now. Then I'll just keep going down. Um, I don't think I'll go all the way down to 30K because again, you're balancing the risk, right? So the chance that that actually happens, you know, you're gonna get much better prices if you buy at 30K if it goes down there. But what's the chance it actually happens? Again, I'm making this bet as I'm just looking at things right now. I don't think it's that likely. So um, it could happen, <laughs> we'll see. This will be historical record. But I think I'll just place orders like 49, 47, 45, 43, um, all the way down to this wick of whatever it is, 42K. <clears throat> so I, if I do that, I set, maybe I could spread them all out. So it's literally like 49, 48, 47, 46, 45, 43, 44, 42. Um, that way I should be pretty happy. I'm not gonna get the best price. I'm not just gonna buy it when it goes down to 42K, but I don't know that it is gonna go down there. It could again, but I'm not that confident. And I don't wanna have to keep checking every single day, waiting for the next time that it bounces back down there. So for me personally, if I just go, I think within this range, 49 to 42, and I set those limit orders, essentially what that means is that I'm buying at the average at the average price there. If it, if it goes the whole way down rather, I will get the average price. Um, if it only goes down to 49K, well, I will get an average price of 49K and I'll have bought less, but that's 
that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I'm, I'm happy with that. So that to me is my balance of, of stress and getting a good price. Um, what else? There wasn't much else for this video, really. I think, I think I've shown you my thought process of how I'm approaching this. Uh, I want to show you the importance or demonstrate the importance of being able to look at historical parallels, understanding that history doesn't repeat, but does rhyme. And so you can see the bounds of what is practical and theoretically possible again today based on what has happened. Before we go, I missed one thing. I wanted to tell you what I'm actually buying. So I was showing you everything in the Bitcoin chart, but uh, as time goes on, the Bitcoin chart is less and less representative of crypto. So it's important that you start understanding that the, they're going to be more and more different as time goes on. Basically, as the crypto ecosystem grows, the relative importance of Bitcoin is just going to go down over time, slowly. And what I'm going to be doing is not just buying Bitcoin. I do have a large portion of my portfolio is Bitcoin because it's just safe. You're not going to get massive gains out of it, but it's relatively speaking, at least less volatile. What I found interesting with this uh, most recent crash is that generally these liquidation events where everything just drops really quickly, they're all interconnected. So that's what the COVID, the March 2020 crash was an interconnected financial liquidation event where people were just trying to sell whatever the fuck they could so they could not get completely wiped out in everything. And so everything just basically, everything except for the dollar, I think went down in tandem. And so what you normally see is that happens in crypto markets as well. When, when Bitcoin drops, everything else gets dragged down with it. In this case, this happened, and you can see here the exact same event here for Ethereum. It dropped, I mean, what's this wick, like 20%, which again, I don't have it up now, but I think that's less than, than what Bitcoin dropped down. And it's also, it's still up in the last seven days. So this relative outperformance of Ethereum and some of these other alts, I think, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but it is looking like Ethereum is starting to just display more and more strength against Bitcoin and some other altcoins are as well. And so to, to sum this up, I will not just be buying Bitcoin, although I do want to continue. Uh, those limit orders will be set for Bitcoin, but I'm also going to have a separate set of uh, limit buy orders for Ethereum and probably, probably just Bitcoin and Ethereum. I think I'll do them 50-50. And the reason why being that I think Ethereum more and more is like, it just seems to be displaying, displaying a lot of strength, like continual strength in the face of these market crashes and, and, and similar events. So that's it, guys. Uh, now you know my strategy. I'm literally going to stop this and I'm going to go away and place these orders. I hope you found my thought process useful. Let me know if you like this kind of video. This is the first, I believe, the first half of this video that I've ever done. Uh, just to stress again, I'm not an expert. I'm just somebody in the crypto wild west learning and exploring just like you are. So if you did like that, make sure to give the video a like. Again, leave me a comment if you found this helpful or if you want some different perspectives on anything, whatever, just let me know down below. I'll try and make that for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.